Hello everyone, this is Dino Don here with another update on the War Corsair project. So this will be basically be my first major update of the season. Uh, today it's still only in the 50s, rainy, chilly, damp, humid. Uh, so what I'm doing today is I went ahead and pulled off my tires and rims on both sides. Took the bearings out of them. Oh, by the way, I bought a can of Bondo for this, so I can get to work on that. And that is good all the way down into the 40 degrees, so I can do that anytime now. Uh, my, my idea was to get the plexiglass formed for the windshield, and then I was going to work on that. But in the meanwhile, I ordered two new tires for the airplane. Here is the old tires. These tires are pretty old, and if you can see, this one don't look too bad. Uh, yeah, there it is. You can see the, the cracking around the treads. So they've, they've kind of dry rotted over the years of setting a long time. That was probably where it sat in the dirt. But anyway, as you can see, the rims are pretty cruddy looking. So I decided to tear them apart, put them in the blasting cabinet, get them all fresh and clean. So that's the before. And this is the after. This is using the aqua blasting cabinet, water and glass bead. I had to pop the bearings out of this, the bearing cups. So I was going to blast these and put the new tires on. As you can see, here's the new tires. These are actual, actual Aero Classic tires. I think it says they're made in Vietnam, possibly. <laughs> Either way, I got these from Aircraft Spruce. I ordered these things Tuesday morning, I think before noon, and they were here Wednesday morning before noon. It's like 24 hours these tires were here. I expected they were going to ship them from Georgia, their main warehouse, but it ends up they must have uh, bought out some company over by Harrisburg, PA, because that's where they came from. They came from Harrisburg. Since I live in the Erie area, uh, they came in overnight, one day. Couldn't ask for better. Well, these are what they refer to as an Aero Classic. Their size is 406. They're for a 4-inch uh, wide tire, 6-inch rim, and these are also 6-ply. So, I don't know if you can read it, but it says here, 6-ply rating, maximum load 660 pounds per tire at 50 PSI. Maximum speed 70 miles per hour. So that should be more enough. This airplane should be airborne or probably around that time. Anything after probably 50, 60 miles an hour, it should be off in the air. And it's got your conventional tread pattern. They seem a little thinner, but with, when the rims are all together and their air depth, they'll probably balloon out just a little bit. Um, there's one tire I already pulled apart. And if I stick them on top of each other, for the most part, they're pretty close in size. I think they're, when it was aired up, it's a tiny bit undersized. They tend to, these old ones tend to balloon out just a little more on the tread. Uh, Width-wise, I think they're, they should be similar on widths, but pretty close. But they should work. At the very least, they're not bigger, so they should fit. Uh, that tire I've done any with. This tire here is, I've already got it all baby powdered up. Whenever you're working on aircraft tires or any tire with a tube, always put baby powder, talcum powder inside there. Coat the whole inside of the tire, coat the inner tube, put it in there. Because what happens is that tube will sit there and chafe inside and pop a hole in it. So, uh, these brake, brake rotors are Matco. They're the exact same um, rotor that the plans calls for, the original plans calls for uh, Cessna 150 uh, rims. These, I think when they came, only came with three holes. I had to drill drill the other three holes in it. But they're the same as a Cessna 150. Uh, this hub is in the plans. You actually have to machine these yourself. That was like one of the very first items I ever made for this airplane. very first piece of material I bought was a like a 5-inch, 6-inch piece of bar stock. And I cut these out on a manual lathe, similar to my Logan lathe. Actually, I think it was exactly the same kind of lathe Logan. Um, but as you can see, 
and rim on each side. <coughs> There's a place for the valve stem. And then also, this isn't in the print, these little notches. Once you pop that bearing cup in there, there's no way to get it out. The cup sits back in here. You could bore this out a little more on the inside diameter to, so you can get in there and get a punch behind those things. My idea was I just drilled a couple holes, milled this out, so now I can get in there with a punch and knock the cups out, just like I did here. To, so, But this all cleaned up beautiful. All right, and I was going to do just this and throw them back together with the fresh tires, and then I thought, hey, I got me a nice powder coating oven right there. Everything on the airplane underside is white, so today I'm going to run up to Harbor Freight and I'm going to grab me some white powder coat. They only sell satin or matte white and matte black. It's hot not gloss. The landing gear I had done in gloss, but it's really not glossy after all these years. So I'm going to go ahead and powder coat all these white. And then I'm going to take and throw them together, put them back on the plane, get the brake pads put back on, and refill the whole system with brake fluid. See, these are Matco's. Got a little bit of white overspray on them. But I bought those uh, recently. This is just an old thing from my gyrocopter. I bored a hole in it, stuff it on there so I could use the jack, take the other tire off. So, oh, and another thing that I always keep forgetting to mention, I ended up buying me a piece of ceramic matting. It's supposed to be half inch thick, but it's actually thicker than half. It's got a real heavy foil face on it. This is, let it focus. Anyway, this has got a real heavy aluminum foil cover on it. And I'll, uh, I'll probably glue that in with some high temp glue. But it's meant to, you can see the exhaust pipe right here. You gotta keep this heat away from the cowling because it's such a close fit in here. So that'll get glued in. I may have to get more. This may not be long enough. Uh, but I also plan on wrapping these pipes with that header wrap tape. So, you know, like I say, there's the bearings and spacers for the, the wheels. These bearings have a built-in rubber seal on them, so they can seal against the cups. And then the, these are the nuts that you have to actually make to screw onto the axles. But these landing gears, they were all built from the plans. So, so that's where I'm at. Uh, the cabinet will work just fine for powder coating. You just got to let it heat up. Get it up to temperature and let it stabilize, and then you can throw the parts in there and bake them at 350, 400 degrees, whatever it takes. So what I'm going to do is tear this tire down, do the same thing. You can see some nice cracking in this one. And that's apparently where it was flat. But these are a 530, 450 by 6. They're a go-kart tire, but these are only 2-ply. These are 6-ply. So these don't have enough load rating begin with. These were go-kart tires. But that's what the planes call for, for the Corsair. The other aircrafts take a smaller tire. So I'm going to go ahead and tear this thing down, blast them up, get them clean, and I'm going to run up into Harbor Freight tonight, grab some uh, white powder coat, and probably coat them up tomorrow and put them back together, and then I'll finish this video. All right, for now, this is going to do it until I get these powder coated, and uh, I'll be back when that's done, or ready to go in the cabinet, one or the other. Be back in a little bit. Okay, everybody, I'm back now. I've taken and cleaned all the parts out that I'm going to powder coat. There you got two pieces of uh, rims for each wheel and then the center hub that holds the wheel bearings. They're all cleaned, blasted, polished, ready for powder coating. As you can see, I got the generic cheapo uh, Harbor Freight powder coat gun. I've got some white powder coat from Harbor Freight. Not sure if it's a matte finish or gloss. The black actually says matte on it. Uh, doesn't really matter. I prefer it to be a semi-matte finish anyway um, because the airplane is a semi-finish semi color and nothing's glossy on the plane. All right, well, now I did manage to get in the two new PID uh, SSR solid state relays with the heat sinks. Got them all mounted in and rewired and tested those out and they worked just fine. <clears throat> and then I got in my new thermocouple. This is an air probe thermocouple. And I put that in last night. I just disconnected the old one down here. Couldn't get it off because it's uh, bolted from the backside and they can't get to it. So I just left it, left it in there. 
I went ahead and fired it up again last night and tested it with that thermocouple. And as you remember, I had a temperature gauge hanging, thermometer hanging in the uh, cabinet. I now mounted that down in the corner there so I can see it, like so. It's permanent, detached, pop riveted. If I need to change it, it's just take the pop rivets out. So I'm ready to go. Uh, like I said, I run this thing up last night, and with that new thermocouple in there, the temperature on this readout reaches temperature before this does now. Before this would reach temperature before that thermocouple got this thing warm enough. So it's only 15 degrees Celsius in here today. We've got the cabinet set at 204 Celsius, which is 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So what I'm going to do now is <clears throat> throw those parts in the oven, preheat them, get them up to temperature, get them out, shoot them with some powder coat, get them back in there and cook them up, see how it turns out. I'm going to go ahead and stop the video now and get this uh, heated up, put those in, get this heated up to temperature and get 400 degrees going and I'll pull them out, shoot them, put them back in and I'll be back with that. All right, see you in a minute. Okay, everybody, I'm back now. I took and went ahead and put on the first coat of powder. And I was surprised it didn't seem to want to go on very well, and the gun wasn't spraying very well. So I put it in, I bake it, and then I was baking it, waiting for it to melt. And I could see that there wasn't enough coating on the parts. And I'm looking around and I realized, oh, I didn't hook up the ground wire. Because once I took it out of the oven nice and hot, I set it over there, grabbed the gun, started spraying without hooking up the ground. So now, did the first coat and it still had some light spots in it. Uh, so I, I ended up putting more powder in the gun and that seemed to help spread it better. And then I took and uh, just now threw it back in. So I wait for it to gloss and then I'll start the 15 minute timer. And when she's done, I'll pull them out and take a look at it and show you what it looks like. But as you can see, the cabinet is a tick under 400 degrees. That's what it's set to run at. So, all right, I'll be back when these parts come out. All right, everybody, I'm back now. As you can see, the parts have now come out of the oven. They got a pretty good sheen to them. They look way better than they did the first time. Looks like they got possibly enough powder on it now. I'll let them cool down, take a look at them, and see how they turned out. And if a couple of them are a little not as good looking as the others, they can always go on the inside of the wheel assembly because the uh, brake caliper, brake rotor disc goes in there and covers the whole thing anyway, so you can't see it. But they look they look fine. I'll let those cool down and I'll start putting the bearings. I've got to put the bearings back in the, these after everything's cooled down. And then reassemble them with the new tires down there on the floor. And then once that's all done, I'll come back and show those to you. So until then, I'll be right back. Okay everybody, I'm back now. I'm finally done. This is what the final product looks like. That's the outside, the new tires, and the brake drums, rotors, bolts. So I got the bearing cups in there, ready to mount the tire. Let me go ahead and bring this over here, set this down. That's for this side. You got to put the jack under here, lift the whole thing up. And as this side, you can see, I've already went ahead and assembled this one. That's the finished look of that. And get the brakes on. Now all I need to do is uh, refill the brakes and uh, bleed them out. Because when the airplane was upside down to do the fiberglass on the bottom, most of the fluid ran out, ran all the way up to the master cylinder, which is up inside here underneath the fuel tank by the firewall. All the fluid ran out. So. This is going to do it for this video. I'll go ahead and get this tire mounted. Uh, the one thing I did have to do on that side over there, there is a bushing that goes on the axle first. Here, there's a spacer. Where'd the other one go? I'm missing it. But anyway, the spacer goes on, then the wheel bearings, then the tire and another wheel bearing, and then the Collar. And then the collar, as you can see, is drilled with holes. Well, it seems like the thing's not focused. And it screws on there and cutter pin. Well, that side over there, I've really never had them cutter pin before. Uh, I was about a half a hole off, pin wouldn't fit in there. 
So I had to cut down on those spacers. Oh, there it is. Just a piece of tubing. So I had to cut the spacer down. That side over there, I'd take about 80 thousandths off of it to get the, the nuts to line up with the pinholes to get the cotter pin in. So I need, I'll check this one first, but it's probably going to need the same thing. And then whenever these come apart, you have to keep the, uh, keep all the hardware for each side uh, together. So, all right, I'm going to go ahead and finish this job up, but uh, I'm not going to bother showing this last tire because it looks just like that one. So I'm going to go ahead and call this video good to go and get this uh, composed, composed tonight. Oh, one more thing. I did get a coat of flat black up here and I also painted up under inside so there's no glare going under the instrument panel so I've got one coat on there I'm gonna give it another it's just some flat black uh, rust-oleum brushed on get that on there before the windshield goes in so all right oven worked fine had no problems with it tend to overshoot a little bit now and then but overall it worked good clean up my mess for that put that stuff away and call it a day so all right as always people appreciate you taking your time watching my videos and feel free to leave any comments questions or concerns and i will answer them as they come through so for now this is uh, the update for the war course air project and i'll see you on the next one